I've been uh, I've been working with those for a while now, and uh, if you if you read my book, it kind of tells you a little bit about my journey, and if you watch some of my other videos, uh, it tells you a little bit about how long I've been doing it, what I've been doing, uh, what all I've been involved in with the dog training industry, and I'm at a point right now where. I feel like I'm just starting to scratch the surface of, of you know, my uh, career, I guess, as, as a as a person in the dog industry. And I've noticed that I've gone through, like, different uh, stages. And I think a lot of people in the dog training industry go through these stages. I, obviously, I think they, they, they really, really do. Uh, there's the first stage where you're really excited about doing this. So you get super pumped, and you know you uh, you do your research, and you put in a lot of work, and you're very eager. You get started. You find either the right dog training school, or a couple of dog training schools, or you find a mentor, and then you kind of shadow under them, and you apprentice, or you do a lot of self exploration. You you read a bunch of books, you work with your own dogs. And you just get super excited about the about the industry, about this new career path. So you go through that, and that's exactly what I went through. In that stage, I think is when people are willing to put in the most amount of work because it's exciting, it's new. You want to do so much of it, and you want to learn so much of it that it seems like there isn't enough information there for you to grab. Everything that you learn is an aha moment, and you get excited, and you can't wait for the next aha moment. And that is like the first stage of your new career path, right? Uh, something I went through. It's why I was willing to, you know, put in a lot of work in the beginning. Uh, why I was willing to even put myself in even uncomfortable situations just for the sake of learning when it came to working with dogs. And that lasted for a while, right? Then the next stage, I think, for a lot of people in any profession is they get the the basics but then they start to you know they they start to maybe even get a little bit complacent as they gain more more um knowledge as they gain more uh competence in that field and then suddenly they're not that new anymore and you go from being new and absorbing all this information to now you actually have gathered a bunch of information you have gathered a bunch of skills and now you're not the new guy anymore. You actually see the new guys, and then you you see that you're no longer one of those people. And now you have some good information. And <clears throat> this is the part where a lot of people get a little bit complacent. This is the part where people think they know everything. You see this all the time. I went through it. You know, I'm not going to say everybody does it except for me. I went through that phase where I thought at some point, wow, I really learned so much. I think I'm actually pretty good at this. And before you know it, you know, you become a little bit arrogant. Uh, I see this with new trainers. <laughs> I see trainers that have only been doing this, you know, a very short period of time. And pretty soon they just gain this sense of arrogance where they they truly think they know everything. It's, it is unbelievable. It doesn't just happen to one person. It happens to a bunch of people. It's like they feel like all they have to do is snap their fingers and then the solution to a problem appears right away out of thin air for them. Uh, so you go through that stage. I went through that stage. And I was fortunate enough that I got to work with a lot of very intense and at times dangerous dogs where I had to look past that complacency and think to myself, Wow, this stuff is serious. Like I could, I could have actually gotten seriously injured in that scenario, or I could potentially get seriously injured in this scenario if I don't stop, think, and are careful about, and am careful about this. I think, unfortunately, with a lot of dog trainers in the more so in the pet industry, not so much in the working industry, because but the working dog industry. You really have got to be careful or you could pay dearly. I'm mostly talking about like the pet industry where it's easier for people 
to stay in that phase and never really move past that. Because if you work with working dogs and you get a little bit complacent, you're at some point, you're going to pay for it. If you work with police dogs, um, you know, and, and you start to get a little bit too cocky and too confident, there's just no way that you're not going to pay for it. At some point, that complacency is going to be tested by the right dog and you're going to pay for it. Or you're going to see somebody pay for it right in front of you. And I've been fortunate, and I use that term <laughs> kind of loosely, right? I've been fortunate to have experienced both. I've seen people get seriously injured because I saw how they got complacent with these dogs. And I've also gotten got injured because of the same thing. I became a little bit complacent with some scenarios, and then I paid for it. People in the pet industry don't deal with that quite as much. You know, you get a little bit complacent with... Um, you know, with, with Fido, who is a dog that his main problem is pulling, you're probably going to be complacent for a long, a very long time before you even run across the right dog that will tell you complacency can be dangerous. Your average pet dog is not a dangerous dog. That's just how it is. Your average pet dog is not dangerous. Uh, when you see all these trainers on, on social media, you know, brag about how intense the dog was and how in their two-week board and train, they were able to transform the dog and they show you the before and after. Their version of an intense, crazy, aggressive dog is nowhere near what an actual intense, dangerous dog is. An actual intense, dangerous dog, there are not very many of those in the pet industry, in the pet side. Your average client doesn't have that type of dog. They think that they do sometimes, but they really don't. So you get complacent with dogs like that, you're not going to pay. You know, these dogs are not dangerous for the most part. You're not going to, you know, stepping into the into the into into your client's dog's run whose main problem is he pulls and he growls a little bit or maybe he has bit. It's not the same as being complacent with a dog that could literally kill you. Or a dog that could severely injure you. That's not the same. Um, so naturally, it, it's a phase that depending on what you do, what kind of dogs you work with, it's a phase in which you're either there very, very short period of time where you go, damn, complacency could, could have gotten me severely injured. I need to be careful. Or complacency got me severely injured. I need to be careful next time. Where it's only a, sh a brief period. Or you're in it for a long period of time where you go, damn, actually, yeah, I am pretty good at this. I can quickly do this, this, and this, and this, and this. You get complacent. You go on, on autopilot, which is a very easy way to get complacent then. And these dogs just never make you pay for it. And I think it's fortunate to, to be able to see firsthand how complacency can cost you dearly. Then you move to another phase in your career, in your profession, especially working with animals. And that is, you're no longer new, right? You're no longer this eager thing. Um, you're no longer complacent. Now you get very appreciative about where you are in your career. And that's where I am right now. I already went past my phase where I, th where I thought I knew everything. I already went past my phase where I was incredibly hungry for knowledge and willing to stay up like hours at night just learning and learning and reading and learning and learning. I'm already kind of past that stage of eagerness. I'm past my stage of complacency. I'm now at a stage where I'm very appreciative. And what that means to me is I now really realize that for a very long period of time, I thought I knew a lot. And now I'm realizing, man, I really did not know. Or even to this point, I do not know as much as I really used to think I did. There's just so much more information out there. And it's like all the information that I gather that I've learned through experience and, you know, reading and listening 
and going to going to seminars, listening to to other dog trainers, uh, even better, listening to scientists, reading publications from scientists on the topic of behavior. You know, like I, I, I'm starting to realize that I, I had only scratched the surface, and I can go now. I can look back, and I can go. I'm, you know, I'm definitely need to always be careful. Always, every single time, never take any single training session for granted. And I'm in a, again in a in a stage where I can look at any dog. I can go work with a dog and be very appreciative about that particular dog every single time. Where I go, this is not just another dog that I'm working. This is an individual, and I need to always be careful. Always, you know, not overly cautious. That's not good either. But be very, very uh, aware and and there when I'm working with that animal, and learn as much as I can from that session, from that animal, and from this little journey that I have with that dog. Whether it's a dog that I just started working with, or whether it's a dog that I've been working with for the past six years, or for the past eleven years, and and I'm still learning. Or I'm still eager to learn. I'm still reading. So when I said I'm, I'm past that phase, I'm not saying that I, I no longer want to learn, because I realize how much I don't know just yet. Um, you know, I, I'm still very eager to learn. Um, but I feel, I feel at a, also at a place where I am confident in my knowledge too, where I know the basics. I know the, the fundamentals. I understand. I know what BS looks like and I know what solid training looks like. I know what marketing looks like and I know when the message is very genuine. And so, um, you know, because of that, I'm still very willing to learn. I'm still very willing to, to, you know, be even selective about who I learn from. Because when you're young, I mean, when, not young, but when you're new, that you absorb it from everybody as much as you can because you're eager. You're like, oh, man, this is awesome. This is awesome. Uh, okay, maybe this is not that awesome, but I learned something here. Uh, that was terrible, but I'm also learning one or two things here. And just like I was talking to this awesome, awesome dog training, Ludovic Sturbane, he told me, you know, he's like, I'm not one of those people that thinks that you can learn something from everybody. That's what he told me. Uh, it definitely made an impact when he said that. This guy has a lot of experience. Has been in the uh, sport industry for a very long time. And he told me, you know, he's like, I'm not one of those people that, that I think that you can learn something from everybody. He's like, that's not true. You have to be selective about who you learn from. And early in your career, when you're eager, you're willing to learn from everybody. I also see this with some of my, uh, you know, some of my my peers, some of my uh, fairly new students, where they go out into the industry and they start just, you know, de devouring just information. They're going to this seminar and this seminar and this seminar, and they're going indiscriminately, where they're going here, 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 and there. And I'm thinking, ah, you don't want to go to that guy. You do not want to go to that person, but they're just so eager to learn that they're willing to anyways, because, yeah, they are going to learn one or two things. Um, you know, hopefully they'll bypass the the dog being slammed into the down, the dog being smacked with a, with a towel in the face. They'll bypass the dog getting blasted, uh, you know, for like doing making simple mistakes. But they're so indiscriminate about the amount of information that they're getting because they're in that early stage of their career where everything is new and everything is just amazing. Um, eventually, you get to a point where you get appreciative that you don't know a whole lot, that you still there still needs this, you still need to learn a lot more. But you also become very selective about who you learn from, and that's just a, a stage in my career that I'm at right now. Where I know a lot of BS when I see it. I know garbage, complete trash and garbage type of training when I see it. And um, and I know that you know there is really good sources of information out there that I want to devour still. But I'm much more selective. I'm not just learning indiscriminately. And it's a great, great stage to be in. And 
from here, I think, I, I guess, I don't know what the next stage is going to be. Uh, I've only been in this industry for a very short period of time, only as of right now, only about, you know, 11 years uh, going on to my, you know, onto my 12th year. And that's a, that's a, that's only a scratch. <laughs> that's only a tiny little scratch and, uh, you know, a tiny little notch in the grand scheme of things, you know, I haven't been in the, in the industry for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, like some people have. Um, and, uh, I feel, I feel very, um, very fortunate to be where I am right now. And I almost feel a little bit of obligation too. Uh, and that I almost feel like it's a little bit of my moral duty to at least be as helpful as I can to the people that are kind of new that are in my circle. Whereas instead of letting them know, yeah, you go ahead and figure it out. I feel like I almost like I have to let them know, yeah, go figure it out. But I need you to understand that there are some, some key things that you never want to violate about dog training. And I feel like there are some things that you should really understand that are basics, but are very, very important about, you know, reading a dog, about selecting a dog, or about doing certain things. Because the brand new person will try all kinds of things, make all kinds of mistakes, and then later, years later, they'll go, oh, you know, I made so many mistakes with that dog. Um, I'm at a point right now where I almost feel like I have, if, if I have the opportunity, I want to be the one telling them, hey, you do not have to make those mistakes. I made those mistakes for you, and I'm going to tell you how it turns out. All right? You do not have to look back on, on this dog three years later and go, man, I really fucked that dog up. I can tell you right now, if you do this, this, and this, you're going to fuck that dog up. I've done it. You do not want to be there. Um, and so, again, that's kind of where I am, and people will either take that or, or they won't. Um, by no means... You know, do I ever try to come across as the the authority in dog training? I know I have my channel, I have my videos, and I have, you know, these recordings that I do, and I have the two books that I have out, the third book that I'm working on, and this is not a signal to the industry to let people know, hey, you need to look at me, I have all the answers. This is more like, hey, this is what I've been doing. For the past decade. And these are the things that I know will work. These are the things that I know will not work. And so my whole channel is kind of geared towards that. A lot of my videos on my channel, um, you know, broken down into different playlists. I have protection videos. I have uh, um, bite work videos, so protection bite work videos. I have competitive obedience videos. I have pet obedience videos. A lot of my stuff is very informational. I'm not just showing off what we did. Um, you know, I, I like to put in put it on there. It's kind of a, a, a journal for me too. There are so many times where I look at my videos in the past, and I go, "Man, what was I thinking?" <laughs> so, it is a good recording and a good uh, you know a good journal for me that I can look back years later and go. Okay, I, I had that right. Or I look at some of my videos now from years ago and I'm like, I could have done that way better. You know, or I did not have to do that. I, I could have approached this in a much better direction. And so that's that's kind of my intent is I like to uh record it, help people out as best as I can and and I think it's just great. I think at some point when you are a little bit more advanced, it just almost becomes your duty to try to help other people as best as you can and as best as they're willing to be helped.